Scott Alexander here with my buddy Bam Bam and uh, we are now settled in our new space and ready to get back in the tutorial circuit. Uh, thank you for all of you for being so patient as I've transitioned into the new space. Uh, I know it's been a while since I put a video out so uh, as a reminder for those of you that are new please like share and especially subscribe to my channel ring that bell uh, so that you get notified of new videos. Um, a lot of stuff coming up uh, those of you who've seen my work in the past uh, have probably noticed and have been keeping up with me through Facebook, uh, have probably noticed kind of a shift in the kind of work that I'm doing. Uh, and it's just as I'm growing as an artist, things that I'm more comfortable doing now. I'm using an actual paintbrush now, uh, which I hadn't done in a long, long time. Uh, but I'm, I'm really enjoying it and uh, it seems like the reaction has been pretty positive. So I'm going to be doing tutorials on how I do that, how I embellish uh, some of my paintings that I have. You know, I have 75 paintings in the next room ready for embellishment already <laughs> but I still and I am going to keep doing the pour tutorials uh, but something that I realized that I had never done as long as I've been doing these videos is I had never done a my mix or my formula video and I had a lot of questions about that this week <clears throat> because I posted a, a few different types of paintings uh, and so uh, and I've answered the question a lot of times you know in comments but I wanted to show you guys exactly what I do so that's what this video is going to be. It's kind of a, I'm back, we're back, we're settled, we are ready to get started again. And this is going to be a, my mix, my formula, and then kind of my process of how I go through. And then uh, I will follow that up with some paintings that I'm going to use, the, the paints that I mix in this video. So once again, thank you guys. I'm happy to be back. Like, share, share subscribe, and ring my bell. Thanks, guys. Hello, everybody. So I have moved over to my studio and I'm gonna, I wanted to film this way just for a moment while I mix the, the slurry, which is the, what I, my base that I mix with all my paints. And then I'll switch to another view so you can see kind of what I'm doing and see consistency a little bit better that way. Uh, but I wanted to talk about Elmer's glue and uh, why I use it and, and then show you the mix that I use, the ratios that I use. Uh, so I use Elmer's glue because when I first started doing uh, the acrylic pour, I kept hearing about Floetrol, but I didn't know what it was, and uh, then I, but I didn't know what paint was, and, I, and I'd seen some videos where people had used Elmer's glue, so I went down and I got some Elmer's glue because it was just handy and it was available everywhere. I did learn later about Floetrol, and, and I did switch uh, after a while, and I like it. I like the way it reacts to the acrylic paint. Uh, for me, because I do paintings and, and I do a lot of work on my paintings after the pour, uh, where I go in and I, and I use a tool to kind of manipulate the paint as it's spilled or as it's been poured onto the canvas. And in order to do that, in order for it to hold, it needs to be a thicker consistency than what Floetrol starts off as. Uh, whereas the Elmer's glue is about a third more thick, in my opinion. And so it's easier for me to work backwards with it going from thicker to thinner and I can control that consistency a little bit better. So that's why I use it. So I, you know, I started with Elmer's, I went to Flow Trial, back to Elmer's, and I've been using it now probably for the past year. And, and I've literally done, you know, worked thousands of hours in the last year and a half and I've done over a thousand paintings. And so what you're going to see today is how I get things ready. Uh, again, these are just my experiences for my technique. So. Elmer's glue. What I do is I use a one-to-one -one ratio, so one part Elmer's to one part warm water, warm to tap hot water. And I do that because consistency is the key uh, to all painting, or all uh, flow painting, or pouring anyway, because that's what your goal is to get the paints to be able to play well together, to, to go in and blend uh, and if you have a, you have paints naturally that are thicker than others when they come out of the, the bottle or the tube, uh, metallics way heavier, the, the pigment that it, that it takes to make a metallic is a heavier weighted pigment than uh, one that is done to do, for example, the yellow, a primary color, which is one of the lightest colors. And so you want to, and what will happen is, the heavier the paint is, the thicker it is, 
uh, it'll it'll sink, and so it'll sink and it'll push, and you want to after a while you'll start to notice you know the different mix and the consistency uh, that you're going for for the result that you want. For the result that I want, I know what the consistency is I like, and so that's what I'm going to do. And I have this container of Elmer's Blue. It wasn't completely full, so what I've done is I've marked it uh, to where it was so that whenever I add the water, I'm going to add the same amount of water to my container. And when I say it's a one-to-one -one ratio, it's, it's not exact. What I do is I paint, or I paint, I pour, I will paint, I pour the glue out until it stops coming out easily, and then there's still some glue in here, then I will fill it up with water, and I'll give it a little bit of a shake to kind of get some of that glue that's still in there, and pour it in there, and then just go ahead and stir. So that's what I'm going to do. Alright, so I have my warm, it's warm water, and uh, I'm going to add that to my pitcher. And why warm water? Well, there was there's a, a painter that used to be I used to watch and uh, follow on Facebook, and uh, he had cell in his name, like it, his his sign on name had something about cells in it, and he would produce the most beautiful paintings with cells all over the place. And this is when I was first beginning and not uh, understanding the mix and the reaction between the paints and that kind of stuff. Uh, and and all he did, he said. He just mixed his paints with water, and he didn't add anything to it, and I thought, well, there's got to be something about what he's doing, uh, and he said, but he always made it a point to talk about warm water or hot water, and that's how he was mixing it, and that's how he used his paints. I found out later, or I, I realized later, uh, just doing this, that a couple of things. Whenever I tried it, whenever I used the warm water, it was a lot easier to stir this glue because the, the, the heat kind of breaks down the glue. And then whenever I would mix it with my paint, same thing, if I add water, because this will still come out a little on the thicker side, and not much, but a little bit on the thicker side, and I, I might you know, decide that I want to thin it down a little bit more just depending on, on what kind of paint I'm using. But uh, when I do that, I still use, I also use warm water. And by doing that, it's so much easier to mix my paints. So there is that. Okay, so this is my base. This is what I mix all of my paints with. Uh, and I call this my slurry. Whenever I'm doing, uh, if you read in my comments when I'm talking about uh, the ratios, I say one part slurry to a third part paint, uh, or, or two thirds slurry of one part paint. Uh, third paint so that uh, this is what I'm referring to is this mixture right here I've always got it mixed up somewhere and you know as I'm painting ideas come to me and I and I do I will there are some nights where I'll do several paintings uh, right in a row and so I always have this ready and I always have my cups ready my stirrers ready my paint ready and I am I, I'll just start and I'll just keep going so I'm gonna now switch the view to a different angle so that you can watch uh, me mix this with my paints all right, guys, so uh, I'm about to mix my paints, and I'm going to mix the primary, so I have my red, yellow, and blue. I'm also going to do a white because I've made a slight change in the white that I've been using over the last several months. Uh, but I wanted to talk about the additives that I'm using currently, um, and that is this uh, CRC heavy-duty silicone. Uh, it is 100% silicone, so this is really strong stuff. It will drill down to your canvas level. So uh, what you'll notice later is I don't use a white canvas. Uh, I'll paint it some color or other, just so that you know whenever if it does drill down to canvas, uh, then at least there's some sort of color there. Unless white works, you know if I'm using a white base, then white's okay. If I'm trying to do a darker painting and the result that I want is a dark painting, I don't want it to drill down and then have white showing through. So this one is one I'm using now. I've used every single kind of additive you can think of. I've used silicone, I've used a 3-in-1 silicone, uh, coconut oil, I've used, uh, uh, gosh, alcohol, I've used uh, dish soap, uh, Rogaine, uh, actually, well, it was the, it was the, the knockoff version, uh, but I've used all of those in different quantities, and all I do with this one is I spray it directly into this dropper bottle that I had left over from some paint, and I use a dropper to add it to my paints. Now, 
The ratio I'm using right now is one drop for every two ounces of paint, approximately. Now, again, depending on the paint, the, the, the resulting amount of paint in each cup may differ just because if I'm using, let's say for example, for the red, I wanna get it a little bit of a metallic uh, look to it. Uh, then I, if I add metallic, then it thickens it up. And by doing that, I may have to thin it down a little bit with some water. So the end result is there's a bigger quantity of finished product in paint. Does it require more silicone? I don't do it that way. I add my silicone once and then I just use it that way. You know, again, if I were trying to do something that was a thousand cells or everything is just cells, the, the mix that I've used that does that is silicone with coconut oil and uh, alcohol. And I add all three of those to a dropper. I mix it up and I use that again. But and then I, in that one, the ratio I use is a one to one. But this is what I'm using today. It's a heavy duty silicone. I've got that in my dropper. And I am going to go ahead and mix some paints. Now I've got about two ounces of slurry that I mixed earlier in my cups. And I even, we'll talk about the colors I'm using. That's always what I, I, I don't put in. But so I've got Anita's All Purpose and acrylic, and this is True Red. Anita's All Purpose, and this is Canary Yellow. I've got the Master's Touch uh, for my blue, uh, and it's a uh, Phalocyanine blue. Uh, and I love this blue. I might do some purple. I'm gonna go ahead and mention it. It's the Violet, also uh, Master's Touch Violet. And then for my metallic, now I don't buy I love using metallic paints, but I don't just buy metallics because they're more expensive. What I do is I use the regular Anita's or uh, I've got some Deco Art, I've got some Apple Barrel. You know, I use all kinds of paints. I just look for color more than brand uh, because I, unless I, I, I'm looking for something very specific like my favorite gold to use is this 24 karat gold extreme machine by deck art i love that one if i'm doing something that i want gold in the end that's my go-to gold but something that i do is i add this anita's all-purpose and i get this for 3.99 and this is an eight ounce container at hobby lobby and sometimes this has got that 40 percent off sale on it or 30 percent however much but it's a steal, and I'll tell you why. I mix this with my colors that are not metallic if I wanna get that metallic look. Uh, you know, and I'll, I'll just add it. I've got some Waverly here too. But I will just add it to, and, and it does. It does affect the shade, a couple of shades one way. You know, it lightens it up a little bit, but I know that going in. So the end result may be lighter than what it starts, but it's got that look that I like, so. I'm gonna pull that over also because I know that I'm gonna want that with my blue. All right, so let me get this started. And I eyeball it, y'all. I don't, I mean, I don't know what the easiest way would be to actually measure. Okay, about that much. Paint. And because I know I want it metallic, I'm gonna add some of this metallic white. And let me stir that up. Something I did lose in my move, I had, and, and I got all kinds of yelled at one time when I mentioned this in one of my comments, a whisk that I used to stir my paints. And oh, somebody came after me and said, nope, you can't use that. And I said, well, I can, and I have been, and the point was, you know, you don't want to have air bubbles in your paint. Uh, and so that was the point is that you're going to have too many air bubbles when you do it that way. And I said, well, I'm not whisking it to, I'm not trying to put air into it. I'm just using it to stir. And because it had all the little prongs in there, it just seemed to stir better or, or blend better. All right. So there's my blue. A little on the thin side, even for me. 
but so I'm not going to need to add any water to it. I guess I could leave that in there. Okay, let me get some yellow. Uh, I do add more yellow. Here's another one of those things. I don't know what I know until I start talking. Uh, with yellow, because yellow gets eaten up by the darker color so easily because it's a light paint and, and, in color and in weight, um, I do add more paint. So giving it a fighting chance in the end result is what I'm trying to do. Okay, so I've got some yellow. I'm going to let these sit for about 30 minutes after I finish mixing them so that I can get the air bubbles to rise. I'm going to go ahead and do a gold. And what I wanted to show you, if I can, it's kind of hard to translate a feeling like onto, you know, whenever I'm filming. But I can feel just by the stir that this paint is thicker than the last two that I just finished. And so what I would do with this one is, you know, just add a little bit of warm water. I mean, it even looks different whenever I'm stirring it. Okay. And I'll add some warm water to this one to get the consistency back to what these are or the other paints that I've mixed are. Uh, you know what? I haven't done this. So I'm going to go ahead and add one drop. Oh, there went two. Oh, so it's one per two ounce, so it's about two and a half. I said one for every two ounces. It's one for every one and a half ounces if I'm being very particular. And this does have about three ounces of paint in it, so the two drops are okay. Mix that up in there. That feels really thin, so I'm going to add some of this. This is more for consistency than effect. And like I said, that the metallic paints are heavier, have more pigment in them than these others, non-metallic. So that'll help thicken this up a little bit. All right, and now for red. For that one, I'm going to add, it's a Deco Art Berry. It's one of my favorite colors to use. I use it when I'm making orange. I'm using it, I use it uh, when I make like a melon color. It's just, for me, that's, I like that, that deep, a deeper red than I can get out of the bottle usually. And it has that metallic in there also, so bonus. See that I was very careful. All right, guys. So I've got my primaries. I've got some gold. I'm gonna talk real quick about my white, just because that's one that I am doing different than I did in the past. And it's because I had a neighbor who's a house painter and he had all these little, he call it his, the samples, I guess that they pre-mix and they have, anyway, he had a bunch of them laying around. He said, I don't want to throw them away, so uh, can you use them? And I said, well, I can surely try. Uh, and so this is, do, 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 do. it's called, the color is extra white. Um, it's an interior paint. It's a latex-based paint, uh, which is different than I used before. And I guess the actual formula is not important because the difference is because it's a house paint. Let me see if I can get to the 
label here. I had a few of these. I had a label out somewhere. Just so that I am not misspeaking. So it's an acrylic latex interior. In, well, this is an interior exterior acrylic latex. This is a sample uh, quart. And so this is what I'm using now for my white. And, I, and when I say I'm using it for my white, I still mix it with some glue, some of my slurry, just not as much. And I'll put more, uh, as much of this in there, but it's because I'm going to use more, I need to mix more white than the other colors. And so, and this comes out pretty thick. And I should have mixed it better than I just did that little hand stir wasn't, isn't really cutting. <laughs> I saw some things fall in there. So, and once again, I won't add any, I won't put an additive in my white. I will add a little shimmer to it though. Somebody asked me the other day if they could add, if you could add um, pigment to your acrylics whenever you're doing flow. Um, it was somebody who was working uh, and I said, well, this is my philosophy. The answer is yes, uh, because, and I, I you know, adding, uh, a pigment or you know what but what is acrylic paint anyway it's pigment uh, mixed with some sort of a vehicle uh, that produces the paint well you're just adding more pigment to it and that's perfectly fine I said at the end of the day it's your money <laughs> go for it and, and I have you know I, I do so many different types of art uh, and I have so many projects and through my my art life uh, I have so much stuff and you know so I have even pigments that I would that you can buy in the baking aisle that you can either edible. I throw that in there too. Shoot. Whatever I can find. Alright, so I've got some white going. And that is pretty much it. So that is my my mix, my formula. It's again, it's a one-to-one -one ratio. I use Elmer's school glue one-to-one -one ratio for with water. And I mix that, make sure it is completely combined and you're going for consistency. Uh, you want the same consistency for all your colors whenever you're doing a paint. Uh, I've got several different brands. I've mentioned I, all kinds of different brands of paints that I use. I treat them all the same in the end. Uh, I don't always list my colors. Well, I never list my colors because I start here and then I start adding colors to it because I don't necessarily always need or rarely anymore you know, the, the exact primary colors. You know, I will, I do a lot of work with purple. I do a lot of work with teals and, and uh, you know, uh, different shades of blues and greens. And you know, I, use, I like the cool colors. And so I will start adding all kinds of stuff color wise, but the end result is what I, you know, no matter what I add to it, I'm going for the same consistency in the end across the board. So that is it for this video. Uh, in my next video, I'm going to start with some of these paints and some others that I'm going to get ready for uh, a pour. And I'm going to do, uh, I think the next one I'm going to do, well, I have, I have several canvases prepared. Uh, but I am going to do the uh, reverse bubble dip again. Uh, show you guys step by step how I did that. And uh, the floral. I'll do a, a floral old school style. This is before I had ever heard of this, the, the dip or the reverse dip or any of that. I use this little tool and I'll talk about this in the video, uh, but I'll do this, use this to do a floral as well. So again, thank you guys for watching. Please, 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 if you like what you see, please like, share, subscribe, and ring the bell uh, for my videos. <clears throat> if you have any questions, I love questions and I love answering questions. Uh, so let me know if you have any questions, uh, comments, and uh, I will see you guys very soon because I am going to start again. Uh, but again, thanks guys. See you soon. Bye.